Did you know Sony and Nintendo entered into a development partnership to create a new console, a video game machine that would be one of the first to play CDs. Sony would provide the electronics, CD player, and other parts, but Nintendo killed the project. Sony decided to continue to develop the technology and launched it as their first gaming system known as the PlayStation. Welcome to Professionally Casual Gamers, the podcast where two friends kick back after a long work week and casually talk about everything gaming. I'm your host, Ralph, back from the dead, joined <laughs> by my co-captain, oh, no. and Nata lover oh, no. for her big anime Get- personality, <laughs> Alex. I hate you. Oh my god. How have you been, Alex? Oh, I missed you, man. Gee, yeah, I missed you too, man. <laughs> Ah, uh, geez. Yeah, it's been a long, long work week, end of month nonsense. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll get into this later, but just a crazy week in America in general. Dude, uh, the next season of America. Yeah, 2021. Not disappointing. Off to a really good season start here. But, yeah, I've been good. Glad, Definitely glad to have you back so I don't have to do the artwork and the thumbnails for our podcast because, listeners, if you did have a chance to see what I... Um, what, what I created, uh, it's like Frankenstein's monster over there. We're going to teach Alice how to do some artwork soon. I think I have an idea on how to do that, actually. Cool. Um, well, today we're kicking off episode 20. I think what, that's what? a, I think that's a really huge deal, honestly, because even my now wife, Samantha, thought we were going to quit after two. Two Rip. episodes. The truth comes out. <laughs> oh man, the belief. But no, but she's really proud of us, and I'm really proud of us as well. So I'm glad that we're able to do 20. The next step is 50, and then we're gonna do our hundredth episode for Ooh, sure. Yeah. So and let's... maybe some drunk Mario Party. Do... Along. Go ahead. <laughs> I really Listeners, do that. Alex has been suggesting a drunk Mario yeah. stream, a uh, Mario oh, Party yeah. stream for the longest time. We'll, we'll definitely do great? it once we once you know this whole COVID thing eventually dies down in 20 years you know what i mean 20, uh, don't say that <laughs> but um let's kick off this episode strong with some video games alex what have you been playing because i have not played a single thing well you're off the hook because honeymoon and wedding and whatnot um let's see so yesterday they was it yesterday it was yesterday two days ago uh, Square Enix released a demo for their new game called Balan Wonderland. Is that, um, so I saw that. It's like this, honestly, it reminds <laughs> me of, I don't know if listeners, if you remember this, there was this game that people were so excited about on the Wii, where mm. this weird clown thing was flying. What? Do you know what I'm talking about? Are you talking it's about like, Knights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So okay. it kind of has that same vibe, because I didn't know what that was. I'm like, oh, did they make a sequel to that weird clown flying game? So what, what is this game? Was there game? a Knights game on the Wii? I believe so, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it's... Hilariously you mentioned that because I don't know um so the guy who the director of Bell and Wonderland, he What I don't, a name. I, I, yeah, no, it's <laughs> I don't know if he was a director on Knights or if he was like a main producer or something, but he had a lot of pull on the Knights games. So then when you look at that, you can clearly tell, is this Knights? Like there is a lot of like artistic similarities there with character design especially. Alex is like, why did you just make Knights? No, I don't know. I've never played it. I only really know Knights through, like, the Sonic Adventures games, because they would, in, like, the casino levels, they would just, like, have Knights randomly. Oh, really? These used to be, like, a Sega IP. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah, but the guy left, and now he's doing this. So (laughs) so what is this? Talk talk to us about what Balan whatever you will call it. Balan one. Okay, so I will preface, before I talk any more smack about this game, this was a demo that I played, and... You know, if you're and interested about this, like look it up, download demo. It, I think it took me like a couple minutes to download. Uh, demo was like 15 minutes. So you know, I kind of felt like I was on drugs when I was playing this game. So it was so, good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, a bad drug or something. It's a bad but, trip. Uh, okay, so it's like a platformer, and again, the character design is similar to Knights, kind of like cartoony. Um, it's a platformer. And it kind of has, like, Mega Man vibes to it. Whereas, you know, like in Mega Man where you defeat the boss and, like, you get yeah, some yeah, like power. powers. Yeah, like powers, yeah. Kind of similar thing going on in Wonder Woman. So as you're platforming around in these levels, excuse me, you get, like, different 
monster abilities. So like Kirby? Yeah, kind of, right? So you can have like three equipped and you can change through them as you're playing through the level. Uh, that's kind of cool. But then I don't even like know how to explain this, but as I was playing it, it made, I felt sick. Okay. Oh. So I, I felt like physically ill. Why? Was it like a camera issue or? Okay. And I, again, I don't, I imagine this is intentional, but so the kind of like the feel of Balan Wonderland is like you're one of these kids and I think you go into like this fantastical world. Honestly, it kind of seems like some Willy Wonka stuff. Like this weird <laughs> clown brings you into this weird world or whatever. And okay. So how do I explain this? So imagine like a ramp okay like a ramp going up okay and as you're walking on the ramp the incline starts to just like go down oh it's because it becomes like level to you yeah it becomes more level so that like is always happening in Bal and wonderland they have some like freaky that's kind of cool like some weird stuff going on in their environment it's like optical illusions almost yeah and i think that's like a deliberate design choice which is interesting I haven't really seen that in a game before. But you don't know if it's playable. But, like, when I was playing it, like, my stomach started churning. And which is interesting because, like, I don't get car sick. I'm fine on planes. Uh, I've been on, like, a boat and, like, a cruise ship and stuff. Like, I've been totally fine. Alex is like, I'm a superhero. No (laughs) big deal. But, like, I, I don't know. Like, all things considered, I felt like I have, like... An iron stomach to some extent, but dude, Bell and Wonderland <laughs> defeated me. Got you. I don't know. So like, I'll yeah. put you in a VR game. We'll see what you think. I don't know. Like VR, I'm normally fine with too, except for like the first time I did it. That yeah. was like a little weird because not totally novel experience. But I don't know. So honestly, if I were to, if someone asked me like, should I play the Bell and Wonderland demo? I'd be like, yes, just because of this weird stomach churning experience. That you might have just to like see that unfold. Uh, But yeah, going back to like the Willy Wonka stuff, it's so weird. Like there's this, these flowers that like start dancing out of nowhere. (laughs) And they have pants. Sounds like an acid trip, dude. And they have pants. And I'm like, (laughs) why is the flower wearing pants? Right? Like you only wear clothes to hide private parts. What is this flower not telling me? They're trying to be nice and and discreet, Alex. How dare you? I don't know. So it's just like, it's a super weird, like, Willy Wonka trip with the environment. And then on top of that, you have, like, the unfolding and leveling of the environment. So you're like, what is going on? Honestly, it sounds pretty interesting. It does. So on top of, like, the, the, we'll call it design scrutinies I have the game, one thing I've noticed by myself is uh, movement, character movement is kind of a deal breaker for me, Mm. right? So, uh, and in this case, it feels, it can make a game feel cheap. Okay. So what I mean by that is, and I think a lot of listeners will be like, oh, that that is true, I didn't really realize that, is the start, like when you start running, uh, that animation, like when you're just starting, is the same as like when you're at your top speed for just character movement. Well, that's Opposed weird. to like in, in a lot of video games nowadays, it's like a walk there's animation like, into yeah, a transition. Like the to a first run. step, you can tell, and then like you hit your stride, or even like when you're going up and down stairs. Well, it's a demo. Ex- it's a demo. No, right? no, you're right. You're right. And that's okay. I was like, let's 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 slow it down. It's yeah. a demo. It I don't. Has that out granted, yet. the game comes out. In March. And oh, it's it ba- does? It comes on March. It's oh, I don't know basically if they can fix that. February. So, and like I said, I, I don't think they are going to change it. Maybe that's a deliberate choice of the limitation, right? Because the yeah. way that you're talking about how it transitions to like, you know, a vertical plane to a horizontal plane, there might be an animation limitation. Yeah. For them. And I mean, additionally, this is like a kid's game. I feel like but you you're look a kid at, inside. I know. <laughs> Aren't we all, right? Uh, I found a third gray hair this morning. But, but <laughs> He's almost that, 30. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> oh, get out of here. Yeah, I mean, this is like basically a kid's game. Like, it reminds me of like Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. Do you remember that? That's like another Sega I'm game. a foreign kid, so... <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god. I'm a foreign kid. <laughs> so, like, I know Sam hates the fact that I bring that up, but honestly, there's some <laughs> stuff that you guys had that I just don't know. What like, are you weird Americans doing over there? A lot, of, a lot of the stuff that I grew up with was anime. So, like, some Monster Rancher, uh, Pokemon, though. Hajime yeah. no Ippo, Slam Ooh. Dunk. So, like, nice. Dragon Ball. That's That was my cartoons. Yeah. So I feel like there's the that character movement stuff, like to 
to see if a game is like really polished. I think that's more of a meat. I think okay, no, everyone, I think that would bug me too. Everyone appreciates it, but may to some people it's not as big of a deal. Like I, I don't think a kid would like care as they're playing this, but uh, yeah, it seems interesting. I'm not gonna buy it. I checked out because like Square Enix is one of my favorite studios because you know Final Fantasy. Yeah, obviously. but they let you down so often. They do. Square Enix is so polarizing with their games. Like Tomb Raider was okay. Uh, remember when you bought Avengers? Avengers, I like repressed from my memory. <laughs> they still like email me my character updates. I'm sure they do for you too. Yeah. Like, oh, here are your power levels for characters. I'm like, I'm actually I'm about to jump back in. Email. No, you're not. No, I seriously no, am. Not. Oh my, <laughs> he's just shaking his head, listeners. I, no, you're not. <laughs> well, let's let's not diverge from the conversation. What are your closing thoughts about uh, Balance Wonderland? Blah blah blah. It's you know what, just download it because it's weird and the play it till the end because there's this really weird cutscene that I sent to Ralph he hasn't watched it yet and you're just you'll get a good we can laugh. watch it together you'll get a good laugh because you'll be like what am I even doing in this game I don't know but yeah it's a weird experience I don't know if you have a kid they might enjoy it who knows or you give them night terrors or you give them night terror yeah it's weird it's like Willy Wonka ask like it's um what else are you playing Alex um there's a really there's a really sweet PlayStation network sale. It's like under twenty. It's called like the under twenty dollars sale. Oh, oh my god! Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I already know. What's straight coming. into the point. <laughs> so I downloaded Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm, Dude. the original one, which he is loves why, Hinata. Yeah, man. exactly. This is why Ralph <laughs> is saying this. Uh, yeah, it was back on the PS3, and they ported it to the PS4 as like a collection with the other games. So yeah. I just bought the first one for like eight dollars. For sure. Uh, Does she have her lion fist in that? You love her lion fist. Can't, what? No, stop. <laughs> I'm confused. She No, so this one, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm, is just the original Naruto series. So uh-huh. you know, she did not do that. Okay. The lion fist, yeah. But it's kind of cool because uh, I definitely like grew up watching Naruto, starting in like, maybe like sixth grade or something when it started up back up on Toonami. Uh, so I play this game a little bit on the PS3. So it's, it's fun just revisiting it. And... One of the main reasons I redownloaded it on the PS3 it did not have trophies. I got to platinum it. Heck yeah, I'm gonna platinum it. It's oh my it's. God. I looked at the trophies ahead of time because like, that was easy. kind of a deciding factor. You're like, like 60 60 hit combo or yeah. nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's a super easy platinum. So I'm like, I'm totally down. Because uh, on most of the Naruto games I bought, I did get the platinum. So this this one one's the uh, one missing off your. It shelf. kind of is, yeah. So it's fun. Uh, also nice to like revisit that story, which I haven't like. Uh, watched or, like read in a long time, so yeah, it's cool. Solid fighter too. Graphics hold up. Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy that I would probably say that probably looks a little bit better than <laughs> what the other like One Justice or the oh it does Black Clover stuff that came yeah. out. So it, I think Cyber Connect should just make all of them. <laughs> yeah, it's man, it's so crazy it's such a missed opportunity that like all the ant most of the anime fighters are just trash straight up trash because like they should be cool like fighting fighting scenes in anime just do look cool like regardless of what you think about anime like it's fine but the fight scenes look cool yeah which is a lot of the appeal to it so like it should be free money literally free real estate to put in a video game it's just not yeah, but yeah. That's uh, that's what I've been up to. Some League of Legends, some Among Us here and there. But uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Yeah. So on my end, I didn't really get to play a lot. So as Alex said last uh, week, I got married uh, to the love. Just of my gonna life. casually throw it in there. I, I got married. Yeah. I guess whatever. The, the love of my life. <laughs> uh-huh. um, so shout out to her. Um, so I didn't really get to play a lot. It's odd. We it's oddly weird though. But we did play a lot of Fall Guys during the nice. honeymoon. <laughs> so nice. we did a little bit of staycation try to keep it as safe as possible we rented a very nice hotel downtown Mm -hmm. and then we just stayed in the room the entire time but what i did end up doing is i brought my playstation 5 no you didn't yeah no you because yes because i knew that i knew that they wouldn't have like netflix or hulu or whatever 
uh, in the hotel room because I know that you know, even though like those TVs are very nice, they're they're kind of old. They're not like smart TVs. Oh, you're not like a Chromecast. Yeah. So I brought the PlayStation Five. Um, okay. So the reason I primarily brought... known for its portability, <laughs> <laughs> dude, it was so heavy. <laughs> um, the The main reason is because I wanted to make sure that if we had some downtime, we'd watch like some movies or whatever, um, which we okay. did. Okay. I thought you're um, like you know Sam, you're great on this honeymoon, yeah. but like Demon <laughs> no, no. Souls. <laughs> I haven't even touched Demon Souls. One one little like offshoot though i do want to note listeners this is not a movie podcast but please check out love and monsters it was so good with the percy jackson guy it was so i don't know if it's the percy jack it's a maze runner guy i think they're different actors they kind of look similar but holy crap the movie was so good i was so surprised um we also ended up watching tenant i was highly disappointed really i did not uh, like it at all inception 2 yeah i did not like it, it was terrible i didn't movie. see it oh um, so love and monsters what did you watch it on because i uh, do want we watched it. it on my playstation 5 on prime so you i downloaded okay. uh amazon prime and then i just bought it through amazon prime on my playstation because cool to no one's surprise those Big TVs in those nice hotel rooms, for some reason, don't have anything that's Amazon Prime, Netflix, Hulu, whatever. Mm. So, brought my PlayStation to watch those movies. But, for some reason, we did end up playing some Fall Guys together. Dude, it's building the relationship. Yeah, so, um, Sam played a lot of Fall Guys. Um, she still hasn't won, I think. Everett's just oh really my, good. Why do you gotta do that <laughs> to her? <laughs> haven't won Fall Guys. No, but she's really good at Fall Guys. But, um, for some reason, she just can't get that dub, you know, at that last stage. Because it's, it's always, tough. like, Hexagon or whatever. Um, but yeah, no, we had a fantastic time. Um, so played a little bit of Fall Guys. I just realized I'm like really bad at Fall Guys now. Um, I thought I was fine. I've already won two crowns like back in the day, but now it's like it's impossible. Um, I was playing Fall Guys yesterday and I couldn't get past the second level. Nice. And Samantha was just like, wow, you're like really bad. <laughs> like, how embarrassing is that for you? <laughs> like talking shit to like her <laughs> new husband. <laughs> it's great. Um but other than that, um, before the uh, the honeymoon stuff started, I did play a lot of League. Um, I'm sure super addicted much. to League of Legends now. Um, I'm probably going to try and limit myself of which days I can play League so that I can play some other fun yeah. games. Speaking of drugs, that would be the interesting League of Legends drug. Um, to uh, the listeners. I, I, the League of Legends definitely, the League of Legends bug definitely got me again because now I'm like, Looking at patch notes, I'm looking at skin reveals, <laughs> like oh, that actually, new champion. The, the new Valentine's Day skins look really cool. I actually. didn't see those ones. I saw the Lunar New Year ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Cho- I want that Cho'Gath skin so bad. Yeah. But other than that, nothing really too much of note um, regarding the games that I played. So thanks for the heavy lifting, Alex. I appreciate the fact that you can talk about your games. Always down to degen in video games. <laughs> On that note, let's move forward to some industry news. There's a few, and we actually have something special for you um, listeners Ooh, at the last part. Um, but um, first things first, uh, for industry news, Xbox Game Pass subscribers hit 18 million subscribers. Wow. Um, Microsoft is continuing to attract people to its Xbox Game Pass service. Um, the Netflix of video games, some would say. Um, the service now has 18 million subscribers, up from 15 million previously reported in September. So that's a huge jump in mm-hmm. just a couple of months. Um, controversially, it's interesting because Microsoft recently planned to increase Xbox Live Gold, which people thought was a way for them to attract people to Xbox Game Pass yeah. Ultimate. Um, They kind of backpedaled there because there was a lot of negative press from that. So um, we'll see how that changes up in the future. So I have a question for you, Alex. Not if, Mm -hmm. but when do you think most gamers will have an Xbox Game Pass subscription? Oh, man. Unless you don't think that a lot of people will have Xbox Game Pass in the next I think of years. it really just depends on what kind of gamer you are. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, like if you do find yourself, I mean, I'll, I'll say like if you play around like five hours of video games a week and plus, I think those people probably already have Game Pass or maybe they're planning on getting it soon. But if you mainly use your Xbox as like a Netflix uh, or like, I don't know, like a Blu-ray player or something, then it's just not free. So I think... People who have an Xbox, like, they're aware of Game Pass. Right. They they have to be, right? <laughs> it's so probably, if, like, advertised on their desk. Exactly, yeah. You know, you're probably right. So if it fills their needs, 
Which, you know, 18 million people is a lot. And it's like, oh, what, $10 now? So, that, uh, what do you call it? It's $180 million a month. Yeah, which is insane. Which, honestly, I think is a little low still. I think they're still losing money on that because I don't know. I the, wonder. I don't know if the royalty deals are in the back end. Mm-hmm. But it, it's starting to get there because I believe live is at $200 million. Okay. So, that's also a nice chunk of change. So... Eventually, when a lot of that Xbox ecosystem transitions over to Game Pass, I think we'll we'll start to see the dividends of what uh, Xbox is um, playing with them. Because one thing I did want to say to you, to challenge you, so I would say like a yearly subscription to Xbox Game Pass, I'll say like what, $120? That's two games? Yeah, exactly. And, or like, Crazy. that's even less than two games, considering Un- that, that that's $70. Yeah. So like... Not to mention what I was trying to say, like, in two episodes ago, the medium is just free. Like, not free, but, but like, On it's just Game with Pass. your subscription, yeah. right? So, that that's a $60, $70 game that you can just jump into if you what had a $10 subscription. So, like, I think we are, I personally think we are going to see a lot more people go onto Game Pass once the machine of... Microsoft starts churning out some high mm-hmm. AAA um, quality games because it would be really hard to rationalize to yourself. Oh, I want to play Master Chief, like uh, what do you call it? the new Halo game Infinite. for seventy dollars, or I can get Xbox Game Pass for ten, twelve dollars, and then maybe get some more games after that, right? Because even if you played only two games out of the year, you're still making your money back. Yeah, I mean that's grand if they're new games that you're buying on launch date. Right. Like I said, I think... Like, Game Pass makes sense. Like, you have it. You play it on PC. Uh, If I had a gaming PC or if I had an Xbox uh, One or Series X or S, like, I would 100% get it, too. Uh, It's just, you know, if people actually would use it, if they are playing games, I think they have it. Yeah, because the only reason I don't think people... Like, they wouldn't have the complete market share of the subscription model in video games is if Sony did it. And I just can't see Sony doing it. I just can't see Sony saying, oh, God of War, here you go. Like, I just can't see it. Yeah, it is crazy to think about. But, I mean, granted, if you told me, like, Game Pass is coming out, but, like, before a launch, you'd be like, no way. Can mm. I play Halo Infinite at launch for, like, the $10 a month? But that sounds yeah, yeah, I know. Like, that <laughs> sounds crazy. So, and Sony, we did uh, pass ups on this. Sony did say that they did have a Game Pass of their own in the works. Um, I don't know how... The, obviously, no one knows how it's going to stack up to Microsoft's Game Pass. So, super curious. But I, I'm totally down for the subscription-based model. It is a bummer, like, on the flip side of it, that... Kind of like similar to Netflix, where like movies and shows leave Netflix. That is the case with Game Pass. Some are leaving, uh, and then once it's gone, you know, like you would just have to buy it to play it. Yeah. So that stinks. But honestly, I personally don't revisit games that much. I might play mm-hmm. like older games, like Naruto: Ultimate <laughs> Storm. But I don't like if I buy a game and I play through it. Very, very seldomly do I revisit it. Um, to be honest, that's just me though. Okay. So I do have a. I have a interesting thought experiment for you so i was thinking about this the other day um okay. when i was doing the runner show um so control is currently on game pass and like you said you know eventually control is going to be removed yeah from game pass right control is also going to be a playstation plus game yeah buddy right, for february mm-hmm. as long as you keep the playstation plus subscription down or as long as it's in your library you'll have that forever once you have it, in quotations forever Correct. you don't yeah. really own anything anymore in games yeah but the government owns us <laughs> like where do you think that stands like do you think it would be like which one's a better situation for you having a sub, like your playstation plus where you get like some really high quality games because i think that's where sony's going i think they are doing like high quality games that they're going to be sending out on playstation plus and they're only available for a limited time because I can see it by the way they're treating Destruction All-Stars. Destruction All-Stars listeners, if you're not familiar, was supposed to be a launch game for PlayStation for $70. And now it's going to be free on PlayStation Plus, quote, quote unquote, because you're paying for PlayStation mm-hmm. Plus uh, until April. And then they'll remove that availability. Um, but I'm assuming if you do have PlayStation Plus, you're going to put that thing in your library immediately. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So 
where do you stand? Like, would you prefer that Sony does this PlayStation Plus model where they give you maybe one really high quality game every month and then you own it ish? Or do you like the idea of having Game Pass where the suite of titles get rotated here and there? Um, I mean, so I will say I don't know how fast the the titles on Xbox Game Pass expire or leave the service. It takes a little bit. So like like a year or so they, or like I think so, like a year. Yeah. And then um what do you call it? they usually let you know once it gets removed. One thing that I do want to know and listeners if I'm wrong, please correct me, is that if you download it before it gets taken off, you can still play it. On Game Pass? Yeah. Oh. Then Xbox Game Pass model. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean and yeah, especially if like if you just download then you can save it for when it's gone and uh, honestly even if it you can't do that like even if like if it's gone then it's gone just period i think i'd still be fine with it if it was on there for like a year and that's just how long i have to play it so what you're saying is you really need sony to have the same type of model that xbox has right now honestly yeah like it it seems too good to be true kind of echoing what i said earlier and like the xbox game pass does have like those really quality triple a titles too yeah seems like a it, it, it doesn't seem like a good deal. Like it, it is a good deal, 100%. Yeah. The future is bright in gaming. Yes. But one thing that is a little bit dark is Rip. that Valve is getting sued uh, for abusing Steam to keep PC game prices high. So Valve Inc. finds another lawsuit on its desk as putative class action filed earlier this week alleges that the video game giant is abusing Steam by requiring developers to sell their games at the same price across all platforms once it enters the PC games uh, distributor store. So uh, just a little bit of background. If, let's say, you have a game on Epic Game Store or Good Old Games, it needs to be the same price on Steam. So if you have a sale on Epic Game Store, let's say you cut the price to $10, it also needs to be $10 on Steam. So you can't have a sale on another platform that's not happening on Steam. Uh, on Steam, excuse me. So it's a little bit of, um, it kind of removes the competi- uh, competition between the different platforms. So the suit spotted by the Hollywood Reporter and handled by attorneys at Ohio-based law firm Vori Sater states that Val's most favored uh, nations clause in its Steam distribution agreement forces developers to agree that the price of a PC game on the Steam platform will be the same price the game developers sell their game piece, uh, their PC games on other platforms. The attorneys note that Valve is abusing the MFN clause by making it difficult for other platforms such as the Epic Game Store, itch.io, and the Microsoft uh, store to compete against Steam. Um, do, Alex, do you think this is an issue? Interesting. So, so on, uh, yeah. Steam is controlling the price. Right. And, mm, yeah, I think it kind of might be an issue because everyone would just turn to Steam because it's just easier to get it through there. Right. I, I would think so. Like, again, I'm not a PC gamer. Because if so your library I, is yeah. already on Steam and if it's right. the same price so it on just Steam. makes sense to just get it through there so everything else is there, too. But, you know, Monopoly's... Is, that's not really a monopoly, but it's... Hmm. I don't know. It's a little bit tricky because um, it, it kind of limits what the developers can do, right? So, right. listeners, if you don't know, the amount of money that Steam takes from developers is a little bit higher than in Epic. So, let's say... I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. Let's say Steam takes 30% of any proceeds that happen for sales, and Epic only takes 10%. So, in theory, um, the devs could potentially discount the game much more on epic games or still get the same amount of money um so it's it's a it's a big issue kind of there um it's a control issue and so it kind of limits them on how they can compete in the market so um yeah i don't know so you think it's fine or like as a consumer i think it's okay because it doesn't really affect you on the at the, at the end right uh, there's some dogs pitter pattering yeah, around they're pretty cute that. they're very excited um, <laughs> sorry everyone. I, we have professionally casual dogs just. <laughs> yeah, and I think you kind of hit it on the head there. Like, as a consumer, I'm not bothered by it. Like, if I'm like, oh, I will buy this PC game, 
I always look to Steam first. Right. And so if it's like the same prices there as everywhere else, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm getting the best deal. Um, but, you know, that's not very empathetic. Because well, I think of other- it does affect consumers in the future, right? If this does mm-hmm. happen, you could get a deeper discount on Steam or are not on, on Epic Unlike, Games. Yeah, Store. Epic, yeah. Um, so, like, let's say, like, you have a $60 game. Uh, on Steam, it's $50. But instead, on Epic Game Store, it's actually $30, right? So, obviously, like, it's pretty enticing to go to Epic Game Store when it's a $50 game like game mm-hmm. right so like for you it's actually better right it's just we don't know it yeah because the price is always the same yeah, yeah. so i yeah it's it's never fun to have like just one party controlling the prices uh for them or other people so uh i guess it is an issue this lawsuit is currently in process yeah I has see, this happened before uh no i think this is like kind of like the first thing because as you know, like Steam was the biggest player, right? So yeah. like there's not there wasn't a lot of backing. And so now that Epic's in the fold, I think they're really shaking things up. Again, professionally casual dogs pitter pattering around. Huh. Um, but uh, I think we will start seeing things to um, unfold in the future. Uh, this lawsuit seems very valid to me. Um, I'm not a lawyer, of course, I don't know anything about yeah. that. but it does seem valid. it makes sense. Because it kind of sounds like a monopoly, but we'll see. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of lawsuits and whatnot going on. Especially here. with Epic, right? Because yeah. remember, they like yeah. sued Apple that one time. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, on that note, we do have something special. We're going to do some magical editing magic. And I don't know, that's Magical terrible. editing magic. Magical editing magic. Um, we're going to be talking with our good buddy, uh, RT, and he will be discussing the GameStop stock fiasco. So he's our panel expert for this week. This week, we'd like to go into detail on the GameStop stock fiasco. And through the magic of editing... We're inviting our very first expert guest host and one of my great friends, R.T. Shepard. What up? Hey, thanks guys for having me. Oh yeah, always happy to get more guests on. I mean, we, we love Cone and everything, but <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to diversify and get some more, uh, get some no, new voices on here. Um, so R.T., before we dive into the craziness of the GameStop stock fiasco business. Uh, if you want to give us a little background about yourself, your history with stocks and the stock market, uh, yeah, and then we'll get into it. Hold on. I, I have no background in stock. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, you a random dude we just pulled <laughs> off the streets. Um, yeah, so RT, like, uh, like they said, um, go to the University of Wisconsin, um, MBA program, applied security analysis program, and basically all I do every day is stocks and portfolio management. And I've been buying and selling stocks for like 10 years now and manage a little bit of a portfolio for my family too. So I've been uh, kind of following this soap opera. I am not soap opera. <laughs> it really is though. And then the rest of the world is like watching us too. They used to be watching us because they the presidential situation stuff. Yeah. Now they're like, okay, now there's this GameStop stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't, right? Politics have kind of returned back to normal now, so now it's boring. Oh, we need something, something else. else. <laughs> yeah. Immediately when Biden gets back into office, like we immediately go into GameStop, it's going to go up a thousand percent. Uh-huh. Yeah, the rest of the world's like, man, 20 2020, the 2020 season of America was pretty crazy. Let's see what the 2021 season has to offer. <laughs> the season finale. The season finale. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I think, I think the important part is it's GameStop, which like everyone has like the memory as a kid of going in and like bringing what bringing in like. 10 games, you're thinking to yourself, like, oh, I'm going to get 50 bucks or 20, I don't know, like, $100 for these games. And then they just show $2. Them. Yeah, exactly. Like, two bucks. And you're like, oh. You actually owe us money for <laughs> wanting to trade these in. <laughs> I'm totally going to diverge here. So I just traded in some games because I didn't need them because I got a PS5. Mm-hmm. I tried to sell Final Fantasy 15 to the GameStop and they wouldn't buy it. <laughs> 
They just wouldn't. They just it. wouldn't buy it. They're like, we don't want to give you money for this. They game. can't even use it as a doormat. Gee, that's right. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the worst part would be like you guys get in and they're like two bucks for this game. It's like, dude, it's right there on the shelf. <laughs> get out of yeah. here! It's like, what are you doing? But yeah. Anyway. That's awesome. Well, to suffice, RT knows what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> he's been doing stocks. He's we're our stock guy. We're swearing this episode, I guess. No, we, well, you know, we, we're putting the explicit tag on it, so might as well start off strong. Um, so before we jump in on the GameStop um, stuff, so for the listeners who don't know, let's just set the scene on what exactly is happening for GameStop stocks. And so, um, and then RT will just elaborate on what's happening, mm-hmm. just like a more detailed version of that. So, Recently, the subreddit r um, slash Wall Street bets was able to artificially increase and fluctuate the price of GameStop stocks. Um, that made a lot of short sellers and hedge funds upset. So Robinhood stopped, uh, which is a investment kind of thing for like normal people, um, stopped letting trader uh, traders buy certain stocks such as AMC and GameStop, which were the two kind of stocks that um, that subreddit was talking about. You know, keeping on buying to inflate the prices. So to Today, uh, January 29th, uh, some of the st- uh, some certain stocks such as AMC and GameStops are not frozen yet, but they're still going to look and see and how that's going to go. Um, however, uh, they're not going to they may lift restrictions or continue to do restrictions completely based on how the volatility is happening on the market. So that's just kind of like a very surface uh uh, level explanation on what's going to happen on GameStops. Some people on Reddit wanted to screw over some, um, what do you call it? Uh, short sellers bought some stock, inflated the prices from four dollars to like four hundred, and so now it's kind of crazy. And the government's involved and stock like it's a very new situation that's never soap happened opera. before. Soap opera. So RT, what are your thoughts about this entire episode of uh, the United States? <laughs> yeah. Well, on this season we have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I might even just disagree almost with the intro of that. Uh, like, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, but you know, we I tried. Think we tried. Yeah. We tried. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. Okay. So I guess first of all, like, should I go over the death? I'll go over the death of the short. But uh, yeah, a short is basically that you want to you basically see a stock that you think is going to decline in value, so mm-hmm. you borrow shares then. Let's say, like, you buy shares, you sell them, and you get the cash for them, and you have to buy back those shares to pay off the lender. And right. so you're hoping that, like, let's say you got $10, $10, like $10 share, $10 per share, 10 shares, and then it went down to 7 <clears throat> You get that, like, 70 You buy back the shares at 7 and that $3 mm-hmm. difference, that's your profit. That's a good short sale. That's a good profit. That's, like, what all these hedge funds I've been doing with GameStop for like five years because GameStop's like, who goes to GameStop anymore? Right. Because people yeah. are expecting to see that stock price decline in mm-hmm. the next couple of years. Yeah, exactly. Oh, even maybe even bankruptcy right now. Like that that right. was on the table, and I think it's kind of coming off almost because like a lot of this has been really good for GameStop. Um, but um, on yeah, yeah, short squeeze, so basically Reddit had this idea, these guys are just like, but I'll give it to them. Super creative and like stock market. It's always about evaluation. It's about I love the Reddit community. The Reddit community is bananas. They one time uh, won this contest with Pitbull, yeah. and they sent him to Alaska <laughs> to perform there. Yeah, I think I talked about that just yesterday when I was like discussing Reddit. I think maybe. Yeah, yeah. When time, Reddit puts their mind to something stupid, they get it done. Yeah, no. So, but I will say this: the group, like a lot of the big hedge funds, are like this is like dangerous and stuff like that. Hey, investing is always about like a valuation with companies. It's about creative and new ideas of like something that will work and make money. And Reddit kind of did discover that. So, kudos to them for that. But you know, the whole plan was to call these short squeezes in the community, yeah. start buying these like really heavily shorted stocks, and short squeezes that. So when you short a stock, your lender, your brokerage will tell you, hey, this is like the minimal requirement for like, you need to keep this amount of cash in your account um, so that like, we know there's like, we can get paid back. 
you can buy back the shares. Um, and usually it can even fluctuate from like 25% to even like 80, 100% of like the of your short position. Um, and basically, as like instead of the price going down, it starts going up. That requirement, you're requiring what you sold it for, yeah. starts being a little like, smaller, smaller, and smaller. And once you get the price pull, you have three options. You can either A, put cash in, B, yeah. you can buy back your shares and cover them, or C, if you don't do the first two options, then your brokerage firm's going to come in and do a margin call. And they're going to give you, mm. hey, man, put the money in, or we're going to go in and sell those shit and cover your shares for you. And those are the three of your three options. Yeah. You can see those will cause a short squeeze because obviously everyone's not in at the same price on a, on, a, on a short. So as you start covering and more people are buying the shares, the price goes higher and then yep. it just kind of snowballs really quickly. And then as the price is going up, shorts basically just almost turn against each other because you know they're all trying to cover at the same time. So the price just keeps going up and up and up and up. And the crazy thing about this situation is usually you can cover after a few a few days or whatever, but these hedge funds have been so bold that they just keep on putting more money into their shorts because they're so confident that GameStop is not that not, is not bound with this. Problem is they just completely underestimated the power of Reddit and yeah. its social oh media. So now people are on Reddit, everyone's in on these stocks. Like, I have so many traders that are just like, hey, I buy a few shares of AMC or GameStop. And it's mm-hmm. like, this is a fun, like, uh, it's a, let's see what happens then. Like, so many more people are involved in this than what started off. But, um, so, I'm trying to think, do we... Okay, so, yeah. so and you know what's interesting about this it started off as a meme right and now it's kind of escalated into like this class war between mm-hmm. like people who make like millions of dollars who are super upset about what's going on versus like the everyday man and i don't know it's just really interesting to see yeah. so on that end of it on like you know the the class side of it yeah. Yeah. do you have any comments like about that yeah, no, for sure. And I think the one thing that is, like, ingenious is that, like, yeah, it's pretty ingenious that this whole, like, battle between, like, these sides are that we made this David versus Goliath thing. Right. Mm-hmm. These Reddit investors, these small-time guys, the everyday person trying to make a lot of money by taking away from the big, mean hedge funds. And you can put faces on the hedge funds, and it's really easy to hate them because they control so much money. But, like, the one thing that, like, I feel like it's missed in this argument. Hedge funds don't really like private equity is where the ultra wealthy people go. Right. So hedge funds, just the, yeah, hedge funds, yeah, those are, yeah, hedge funds yes. usually get their funding from three locations. They get it from pension, retirement, and endowment funds. So really, like that's the people losing money. Yeah, the managers might lose their jobs or lose some money themselves in these there. The people who are really losing money that they control that they're investing in these shorts. Those hedge funds are losing, you know, the police officer, the nurse, or that like the firefighter, those people's money, not really their own. And I think that's like a part of this whole how the story's been framed that's already like ingenious from like the Reddit side that it's you know, Dave versus Goliath. And it's to me like I look at it, I'm like, I don't really think it's that at all. I really kind of feel bad for both like sides because someone is going to lose. Mm-hmm. Be, well, obviously, hedge funds have already lost, but when this thing comes back down, it's going to be on everyone that's still in there, which would be like the Reddit side too. So. Yeah. So on that note, obviously a lot of people are gaining a lot of money right now and a lot of people are losing a crap ton of money on shorts right now. Right. So um, my question for you, just for the people that, you know, don't work on stocks uh, regularly, like how, how long will this last? Like, like when is this going to peak? Like, like I know right now it's kind of like a jokey thing and it's like Alex was saying, it's like David versus Goliath, but at one point the bubble is going to burst and things start falling down, like, when do you think that's going to happen? Yeah, I mean, that is, isn't that a $10 billion question? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if I had that answer, uh, I, would, uh, I would not, uh, I would be, I don't know, living the high life right now. But, um, right. 
Um, I, right now, if you look at this lady, there's still a lot of people jumping in and shorting this stock. And I really think until maybe the price movement goes sideways or just goes down, but just get out of, it gets out of the media, then I think like, the price falls again. But like right now, it's, I, I can't even, I can't tell what's going to happen Monday. Like, <laughs> what the news is over the weekend is kind of scary. Like, I, I can see, like, the hedge funds getting, like, you know, trying to rally the troops. But it's going to be an interesting weekend for the hedge funds because they have to report to all their clients to, like, um, on the 31st what their month was. Right, yeah, end of month. Yeah, bad yeah. timing. <laughs> yeah, it's really going to be an interesting phone call on the 31st when you tell your investors that you were on the other side of the game stop. When you got it on the short at ten dollars, and now it's four hundred dollars. You know, so uh, yeah, I, I, I have no idea when it's going to <laughs> So my other question following with this, so what? Do, how does this impact the stock market moving forward? So this is kind of the first time this has happened in the market, right? Like, obviously, there's some instances where the market's been manipulated here and there, but this is the first time where it's really public. And it seems that the general populace just proved that they can manipulate the market themselves. What do you think? How do you think that's going to impact other stocks in the future? How do you think that's going to impact, you know, like regulations for stock trading moving forward? What are your thoughts on uh, just the stock market moving forward? Yeah, well, I'll start off on like the, I guess, kind of for me, the easiest side. <laughs> the, like, the one I can think is for the SEC, they're going to be looking at what is happening in these last few weeks. This is going to be like a case study probably for the next like decades to come. I mean, oh, yeah. the yeah. amount of, it, it's hard to say that Reddit is manipulating the market. And on the flip side, I don't think any of the hedge funds are in this play, like when they stop trading on Thursday and stuff like that on Wednesday night. They, like, I don't think that was any manipulation either. I am, uh, but I really, there are some really bad rules right now. That are need to be fixed, and I think that this will definitely have, it's going to force them to close some loopholes because, yeah, like on both sides, what's happening some real shady stuff. And then to go about the stock market as a whole, like I think a lot of investors, because like you're like a lot of investors that have just been trading for years and years and years that really aren't on either side of this trade, are looking at this as. A, it's, it's kind of a sign of an exuberance in the market. Like, this is nuts. And if you look at the market the last, just this week, like Wednesday mm-hmm. when GameStop was up, like, it was up over 100%, market dropped yeah. over 2%. Okay, so then Thursday, you know, GameStop drops like 60%, and the market goes up 2%. So that means like, okay, finally this thing's ending. And then today, it goes back up like, I don't know, what, 70%. And the market fell 2%. There's a lot of people in the market that look at this and are really scared and nervous about just like, just the craziness and like, yeah, just the greed that is coming from this, like these situations. Because it's not just GameStop and AMC. It's every like stock that's shorted right now. Like, right. And in going up so much, those investors have to sell other assets. So the whole market is very attached to like this, this, these giant squeezes that are happening. And yeah, so like, I think there's a lot of people that are scared and the market is at an all time high, basically. So people have been saying for a while that like maybe we need to, like, it needs to come down a little bit. And everyone's been looking for a reason. And I think this right here is going to be a reason that you will have like something in the near future as a pullback in the market. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So I have a question then. So obviously this is going to impact the stock market moving forward for years and years to come. How do you think the SEC is going to regulate, you know, either just on the buying on the purchasing side, but also on the hedge fund side, you know, shorting, like, is there going to be like a complete overhaul on rules or do you think it's going to be like a, what do you call it, a slow process? Okay. Well, let's just get one thing straight. When is the government ever done anything quickly? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's like, It'd be like a, that. A process. Come on. Have you seen? I've seen one out of my Jeez. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> it's going to be something slow, and it's going to be like 
It's getting kind of oh, hold, hold on. You're, you got kind of quiet there. I was just whispering into the microphone, you know, just you, you know. <laughs> Soothingly. <Yeah. laughs> it was just for you, Alex. Ralph, turn the mic off, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll leave you two alone for now. <laughs> you're, a, you're a married man, okay? Please. I know. <laughs> I feel dirty. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I honestly have no idea where the regulations are going to go, but I think it's going to be a lot about like, the whole stock manipulation thing. And the, it's very vague right now, the rules on it. And it's, it's in, in their minds when they made the rules, it was going to be like one institution like bribing somebody or whatever. Right. And that's really easy, you know, like, you know, okay, jail or fine or whatever. But when it's this many people involved, what do you do? It's like, because like, you can't find six and a half million people on Reddit, and you can't find the 150 hedge funds that are on the other side. It's like, what do you think? It's a tough situation to be in, but I think there will be some rules about just clarifying what stock manipulation is. Yeah, because my question to you, right, um, as someone that, that works in a lot of stocks, do you do you think it's illegal? Like, cause it like you said, how are you gonna find like ninety nine thousand people in a Reddit, right? Saying, "Hey, we're all buying GameStop stocks." Like, yeah. is that illegal or is that like I don't even know? It's like such a weird question to ask. If you tell a hundred thousand people to buy this stock and it changes the stock price, is that illegal? I don't see how that's any different. This is my opinion. I don't see how it's any different. Then every single quarter, when hedge fund, a big hedge fund comes out, or a big private equity comes out, they say, these are my position holdings. And if it's like one of like the top five or ten guys that every like the lot of like investors know, it's kind of bold that like they get like the stocks that they say they invested into new, they get five or six percent dumps the next day. Because like, oh, oh this wow. guy is it. It's like that's like all the like, so I don't see how it's much different than like that except on a much bigger scale. Is the group I just looked at earlier? It's six point seven million people now, and it was only one and a half million. That's scary. Then, that's at, right the, at the start of the year, is one and a half million. So oh, a lot of people have obviously joined this, and even obviously people that aren't even in the group have joined this trade. So. Uh, I'm trying to think. I just lost thought of where this conversation was going. <laughs> yeah, no, I think the, the thing that I was saying is like, uh, I think where you're coming from is they're both manipulating somewhat the market, right? And so okay. it's kind of the same. My main thing too is like, it goes back to your previous statement is that you can regulate those hedge funds because they're they're giant entities, yeah, but you well. can't regulate hundreds of thousands of people oh, yeah. because you, you can't angry regulate redditors. You can't you can't really regulate Robinhood's app because it's you know by. But I, know, I think I, I really like, even if you break down the situation that like we have to like talk about like what happened on the three days, but like right. it is both sides of call foul on each other with like stock manipulation. And I think it's both sides are just, like, in my opinion, just wrong. Like, it's not manipulation on either side. And we've heard on, so if you've been on social media, unless you've been, like, on a completely block the last, like, 36 hours, you would know what, like, people think the hedge funds are in on it, like, closing Robinhood down, which I don't think is true at all. I was actually, yeah, it, and that, that was a long time coming from, from Robinhood. Uh, yeah, just that. I really don't think either side is blatantly breaking the law, but I think there needs to be something that restricts this from happening again. Because, like, mm -hmm. this is dangerous on a lot of different, like, for the whole market. And if the whole market goes down, that's obviously economic. And, like, for the entire, not even just U.S., economy, but the global economy. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of scary to think that <laughs> if... It would be like probably the biggest feather to Reddit's hat they brought down like the whole global <laughs> market. But like, yeah, could you imagine if the next stock market crash is caused by Reddit? Reddit, because <laughs> like to end on that, uh, to end on like kind of wrap things up, mm -hmm. the converse could also be true, right? Like, what if you told um, like a hundred thousand people or a million people to buy Microsoft stock? You know, something that's a very strong stock. And then tell them to dump the stock on the same day. 
I'll always play that. I mean, that That's be scary, a right? That's a scary <laughs> thought. <laughs> could, there be more, could there be a bunch of other people with you buying that stock and they wouldn't know the of it? Then it would obviously be like, you know, a big problem for those people, but like, I, I, on the Reddit side, I just, yeah, just try to think six and a half million people following it is, is, is crazy and, uh, it's kind of cool. In, it's kind of cool. In a, We're breaking in, the global in a economy. Weird, scary way. It's kind of cool. It's okay. Everyone's gonna buy gold now. Oh no! It's everyone already got the memo. Bitcoin is the new gold. So you know, that's a new, no, it's, yeah. the, it's the dog one. The, the Dogecoin. 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 Crypto. Yeah. Uh, I uh, can't go into crypto. I, 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 I'm not doing crypto. That. Scary. Um, on that note, RT, do you have any other closing thoughts about the GameStop fiasco that you don't that you think we haven't covered? Yeah, you know what? I did just okay. So I wanted to hit this up. Did I? Did I go over? I just wanted to say the the. What the numbers would be if you invested at what age? Did I say this already? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. I think you're getting kind of quiet too again. I'm like shouting in my office. My head is off. Sorry. My head is off. Suck, apparently. I don't know what to tell you, but is it, is it all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So if you put $1,000 January 4th, so like the very first trade day of the year, $1,000 uh-huh. in the game stock. And you would have sold it yesterday morning, right at the open. You'd make so much money. You'd be you'd off, your, your one thousand dollars would be worth twenty five thousand four hundred and twenty one dollars. Yeah, because like, because what? Like in January, it was like four dollars, right? Yeah. Like four ten dollars. Uh, uh, now it's like at four hundred. No, I think January it was like yeah, it was like something like that. But we bought it April third of last year when it was at low. We bought thousand dollars worth. <laughs> it was that straight face. Yeah, $1,000 from April 3rd would be worth $175,600. And my last pitch, I'll end it. I'm sorry I'm dragging this on, but <laughs> is, do not be, don't be, uh, I, I don't think people should be investing with the app of Robinhood. They don't offer anything special. Go to one of the bigger guys. They're not going to shut down your trades. They're not going to collapse on you. Please get off of Robin Hood. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you that app. All right. My, uh, um, my roommate was telling me actually. So after they like blocked the selling of some of those stocks, their uh, their rating in the app store it went from like close to five stars to one star in like a couple hours. Like, cause c- imagine if you had GameStop. Stocks, I would be right? livid. Like, if imagine you had GameStop livid. stocks and then it just dropped back to like. Even like a hundred. Yeah. Like I'd be so fucking pissed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Terrible. Yeah. Donnie's oh, Robin Hood. Like Archie said. That's what tells you right there. I mean, it went from 480 at the open yesterday to $120 at the level. What? The That's heck? nuts. That's not a normal thing. That shouldn't yeah. be a normal thing. It's just, yeah. It's crazy. And it's so awesome. awesome. We have, it sounds like we probably got a few more weeks of it. Who knows? For sure, no. Yeah, it's gonna be gonna something be to watch out for. Tuning in to season twenty twenty one of America. Uh, but yeah, again, listeners, this was our good friend from college, RT Shepard, stocks genius, stonks, stonks. stonks. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for joining yeah. us, man. It really means a lot. No, thank you for having me. No, this is this is perfect. Good way thanks, to RT. Meet. All right, have a good one, guys. All right, see ya. Yeah, so now we are going to do our last segment, some budget games, some really Ooh. interesting deals or some things to watch out for. So right now on Xbox Game Pass, like I said in two episodes ago, the medium is out now. And if you have a Game Pass subscription, you just play that whenever you want. The other thing that I want to note is Control is both on PC and Xbox. So that's nice. super exciting. I play that game really great. On PlayStation, I'm doing it a little bit different. Uh, Next month is just such a crazy deal that if you don't have PS Plus, I think 
just get it for a month yeah. and so that you can get these games. So for PlayStation Plus in February, Destruction All-Stars, which is the launch game I was talking about mm-hmm. earlier that was $60, is going to be completely free if you have the subscription. Um, additionally, Control Ultimate Edition. So Very with the DLC and all of the optimizations for um, the next-gen console is also going to be free. And uh, Concrete Genie, which I am probably the most excited about because I, I've been meaning to play it, I just haven't had the time, is also going to be free. So three like phenomenal games are going to be uh, free for PlayStation Plus. Yeah, and honestly, I've had PS Plus for like a, a long time now, and I really haven't been taking advantage of like any of the free games. Really, You don't add the games every month? If I know I'm not going to play it, I don't even bother. You don't even need to download it. No, I know. I just... Whatever. I'm not going to... I know I'm not going to play Wow. It, so. Rich, pl- rich privilege over here. No, but Mr. Like, Moneybags, but honestly, Alex Samuel. Like, these three games that they're including, I'm 100% downloading all of them. Yeah. Because I'm interested in playing all so of them. So you didn't even add Man Eater to your library? No. It looks... It looks like <laughs> something I'm not interested in playing. All right. Well, we're diverging. Uh, <laughs> Nintendo doesn't really have great d- deals anyway. They never they, do. Few and far in between. The one that I thought was interesting is um, Citizens Unite Earth Cross Space. Um, so, yeah, that's $26.99. Whatever. It's fine. It's the only thing I can find <laughs> that was interesting. Um, on Steam, um, Civ uh, 6 is $14.99. And Hunt Showdown, which is a game I've heard some really good things about. It's pretty hard, apparently. Hmm. Is $20 on that platform. The one thing I wanted to note for Epic Game Store, obviously they have their free games regularly. There's actually something in the news that I didn't add this week where they said I think there was $180 million worth of games that were downloaded on Epic Game Store for free. Nice. So um, watch out for those. Those happen regularly. But one thing I wanted to uh, point out this week is that they actually have a sale for the EA Star Wars Triple Bundle, which includes Star Wars uh, Squadrons, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order um, Deluxe Edition, and Star Wars Battlefront 2 Celebration Edition. That's all for $50. So that I think that's a pretty good deal. That, yeah, I would agree. That is a very good deal. Uh, especially just for Jedi Fallen Order. Really like that game. Fantastic. So, Thank you for sticking around for our 20th episode of Professionally Casual Gamers. Shout out to RT again for joining us on this episode. He's a really fantastic guy. Mm -hmm. Um, We had a lot of fun hanging out with each other, and we hope you did too. If you have any discussion topics uh, or questions, send it over on professionallycasualgamers at gmail.com or on our Instagram slash Twitter at professionalcasualgamers. See you next week. Keep it casual. Bye.